Hi, this is The Great Expanse. In the last video, the, well, the last, last, the one before the last video, we started making a self-aiming dart launcher. We're going to continue right where we left off last time. I know everyone says this, but really, if you haven't seen the previous video, you're not going to know what we're doing here, so go watch it. You need to catch up, and I need more views, so go! Anyways, let's start on the electronics and software. I am anticipating this being terrible. I started by working on the code to control the launcher. I figured that would be the most important because all the electronics are kind of based on that. Uh, and as I was working on it, I realized that the board I was using didn't actually have enough pins. The ATiny85 only has six pins, and I don't really know why I thought that was enough for this project, because it's not. So I ordered a different board, and in the meantime I got to working on how we're actually going to figure out the correct firing angle. This shouldn't be much more than just solving some kinematic equations, so hopefully it won't be a problem. So I implemented a simplified version of the calculation to kind of just see it first, and it looks good. As the wall gets further away, the cannon angles upwards to compensate. It's a little frustrating debugging since I'm not able to write to the console, but that's why I did the simple test first. Okay. Now let's do the big boy calculations. I do have to say though, I wouldn't have been able to do this if I hadn't taken physics in high school, so first time I've experienced that. But it has been a little while since high school, so I'm a little rusty with my physics. But I think this is correct. I'm like 90% sure this problem doesn't have an analytic solution, but if any of you nerds think you can find a closed form expression for this, I would love to see it because I really couldn't find one. Okay. And here are the solution curves displayed on Desmos. It looks kind of weird, but I think it's correct. To solve this for the correct angle, since there was no closed form solution, I basically had to do a guess and check algorithm, but a smart guess and check algorithm. I took a computational optimization class last year in college, and I was kind of skeptical on whether or not I would ever use it, but the knowledge from that class actually did come in handy here. I tested it a little bit on my laptop, and it all looked good, so I could have a run on the microcontroller now. And the new board I ordered just arrived. I got the ATiny88, and that has more pins than I'll ever need. I stayed with an ATiny because I didn't really want to refigure out how to program the board, and it was like less than $2 a board. So I got six of them for 10 bucks. And good news, it works, and I wasn't scammed. Um, another problem probably should have accounted for this, but uh, <laughs> this board doesn't have enough program memory, and I still have a lot more stuff to add to. But after spending, admittedly, quite a while changing out a library, making a bunch of optimizations, and removing some admittedly probably necessary code, I got it to fit. But then I swapped out the wire library, which is used for communicating with the tilt sensor, with something more lightweight, and that actually gave me quite a bit more space to add more code. Also, later, at some point, I force inlined every function, which also saved another few hundred bytes. Anyways, though, I spent a while getting everything to work together. Like I said before, debugging is so terrible. When something doesn't work, it just silently fails, and it's so annoying finding where the problem is. I eventually realized that my algorithm for finding the correct shooting angle was really slow in some cases, cases which I had not tested on my laptop first. So, of course, the poor little ATiny88 freezes up and stalls the script, causing nothing to work. You can kind of see it here. When the LED is on, it's running the algorithm to find the angle. And you can see how it's not turning off. I set a max iteration count, so it does eventually stop now. It will eventually find the correct angle to be at, but sometimes it takes a while, especially when the ultrasonic sensor reading changes quickly. So, with some fixes and changes, here it is firing. Even with the current state of the launcher, it seems to be consistently hitting above and to the right of the dot. I haven't adjusted the speed in the script yet, which accounts for the height. As for why it's off to the right, the cannon is currently not aiming straight, because I apparently don't know how screws work. But besides that, I'm actually pretty happy with how consistent it is right now, and I really think I can make the design quite a bit better. So yeah, honestly, I think right now this is the code pretty much fully functional, aside from tweaking some variables. So now, I just need to fit all the electronics onto the plate, which means I'm going to have to tweak and reprint the whole base plate because I didn't account for that for some reason. And, uh, I guess while I'm at it, I'm going to fix and reprint every other part as well. The most important thing I changed about the cannon is that I added these four grooves down the barrel. 
and then these four pins in the launch plate to fit into the grooves so that the plate doesn't rotate and shift as it travels down the barrel. You may have also noticed that there are two slopes on the side of the launch plate now. This is where the pins slide across, and having them pull out together on a slope will hopefully be better than just pulling them out from a flat plane. While tweaking the base plate, I was thinking about how I was actually going to hold it. My original plan was to mount it on my arm somehow, like a wrist launcher. But then I thought, oh, I can add a protrusion right here and add a button to trigger the shooting, and... Oh, I made a gun. Obviously, I'm not actually going to print the handle on like that, so I just left some holes to mount the handle to. I'll probably make the handle as a separate piece later. Now, here's the finished base plate, and printed. For the electronics, I'm using this blank PCB to mount everything onto. I was concerned about my mounting pins fitting, so I made this test piece to see if my dimensions are correct. And it fits decently well. I just made a small adjustment on the final design to be a little more snug. So now, I have to fit all of these electronics on this PCB. I'm really being dramatic. Most of this is just wires. Okay, this actually became a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. I don't know if this is everyone, or just me, but my hands shake like I've been days without a cigarette. It made soldering in tight places really annoying. But now, the board is done, and here we have it fully assembled. Now I would show the tests of this now, but I can't really hold it and shoot it right now with these dangling wires. So I'm going to design and print a handle to hold the button and hold the power cable. So it's not much, just a hole here to hold the button and a hole in the bottom to plug it in. I was thinking about getting a battery to power it instead, but I don't have one and I don't feel like getting one. And now we have the final, final assembly. This really does just look like a gun. <laughs> and I printed it. Yes, I did change it, the handle was too long. Anyway, with it printed out, we should now be done, aside from tweaking some parameters in the script. I attached the handle to the base, and then added the cannon. This should be fully built now. I still think it looks cool, but it is a bit of a mess. I was having problems programming the A-Tiny while it was on the board here, but I added a 10k ohm pull up resistor going to the reset pin, and it seemed to fix everything. Now, in the moment we've all been waiting for, let's test it. This set of testing is with two springs in the barrel. It actually generally hits around the right spot, but as you'll notice, it kind of has a problem with sticking to the board. So I went up to three springs. This worked much better. It pretty much always stuck to the board and we got a bunch more range and from a close-ish distance, it was pretty much always accurate. It does tend to the right a bit still, but I think that's because the laser has a bit of play and shifts the red dot to the right. In hindsight, I'm realizing that a lot of the inaccuracy I was seeing was probably the laser not being held in place properly. I probably should have made the hole a tighter fit. Anyway, I continued firing it off for a while to gauge consistency and accuracy. And then all of a sudden, the darts started coming out really poorly. I didn't know why, until I saw this. I guess the plastic couldn't handle being slammed into really hard over and over again. Who would have thought? I kind of figured some part of the cannon would break from the stress, but I kind of thought it would be the cap on the end but it doesn't matter. It was complete anyway, and I was pretty much just testing it to failure. At least I now know that the end should be thicker, I guess. So, it's not the most accurate thing in the world, but it was never supposed to be. It really just needed to be more accurate than me, and in that regard, I think it pretty much succeeded. I'm pretty bad. There are definitely some problems still. Some I could probably fix. Some I don't even know what they are. But regardless, I'm really happy with this. If I could spend more time improving it, I would want to make it more ergonomic to hold and less... messy, I guess? The wiring leaves a lot to be desired. I was thinking about designing and ordering a custom PCB so I don't need to worry about a million little wires, but I decided not to for the first draft. Another thing that I would probably want to do is use one stronger spring instead of three weaker ones overlaid on top of each other, because they tend to scrape against the side and probably result in significantly less start speed and accuracy. 
If this video does well, I may make a version 2.0, or at least 1.5, with some of these ideas, as well as your suggestions. This is my first time doing a project like this, so if any of you have suggestions for improvements, I'm very open to them, because some problems I don't even really know how to fix. All of the files for this project are on my GitHub page, which I have linked in the description, so you can check them out there. If someone was able to recreate this from just those files and this video, I'd honestly be pretty impressed. Also, if any of you have suggestions for future projects like this, let me know. I know this wasn't game development like my usual videos, but it's still game adjacent, right? I'm certainly not opposed to doing more videos like this alongside the game dev. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed joining me in my learning process. I think it was a pretty fun project. This project took me <laughs> quite a while, so really, if you were interested in it and you want to see more, you know exactly what to do. That's it for this one, so bye bye